Our next question is from Don in Aurora, Illinois. Now that all of my friends and family know that I've been decluttering and um, minimizing, I found a lot of things that I do want to give away to friends because I don't want to give it away just to donate or just to a stranger. I find things that are meaningful to me, and I'd rather give it to somebody that is a friend that comes to mind. However, I'm worried that if I give it to them, they're going to be offended that I'm just offloading my junk onto them. Do you remember the time I tried to give you all of those neckties when I was I was simplifying my life? I this was uh, 2009, yeah, and and I had just discovered minimalism, and I realized how many damn neckties I I had. I had at least two, maybe three necktie holders worth of neckties. I knew I had too many because sometimes I would put more than one tie on the the, the same sort of peg on, on the necktie holder. I had... I've tried. I probably gave you seventy ties. Yeah, and they're really nice, expensive yeah. ties. I kept like four of them, and then I just donated the rest. But yeah, I, 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 totally I spent thousands that. of dollars on neckties. Yeah, what? Yeah. I, dude, I spent thousands of dollars on things. I am embarrassed to admit that I spent thousands of dollars on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, you know it's funny. Like I, I don't, I've never had anyone be offended though by me offering them them something. I mean, I could see where the trepidation comes in. Yeah. It sounds to me like. You know, and Don, I'm not, you know, trying to say your friends are bad or anything, but it sounds to me like you got friends who are trying to call you out on, you're afraid that they're going to call you out on something. They're being petty. Yeah. And, and it sounds like maybe this is what her friends do. Oh. And she's, and she's like, oh, well, this is what they always do. So if I go to them and offer them stuff, they're going to continue to, to, to be petty or they're going to continue to do this. Or, or maybe it's, I mean, there, there's sort of two ways to do it. There's a the real petty, passive aggressive, nasty way. Yeah. And there, there's a way where you and I, like we can rib each other in a way because we know each other so well. Yeah. But even then, I can't imagine that you would be like, oh, uh, w good job, minimalist, passing your time. You, you, yeah. you would do it in a way that was actually funny, that wouldn't make me feel concerned. In yeah. fact, if you didn't want them, you, you, I'm sure it would hilarity would ensue mm -hmm. as soon as like I tried to pass these off to you. You would do it in a way that was kind and loving, mm -hmm. even if it was like ribbing me a little bit. Yeah, all Don, all you have to do is just preface with your friends hey you know that i've been simplifying my life you know that i've been getting rid of stuff and i've got a lot of nice stuff mm -hmm. and i hate to just give it to goodwill do you need any stuff in fact here are the specific things i have that i think you might be in need of i'm not going to be offended if you don't take them i'm not going to be mad if you tell me no but I just wanted to offer, you know, my nicest things that I'm getting rid of to my closest friends and family. And Don, if they judge you for that, then get new friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our friend uh, Colin Wright, uh, he's on tour right now. Uh, we often call him the third minimalist because uh, he's the guy who exposed us to this idea of minimalism early on. He's the first first guy who uh, first person out of the many many minimalists that we've been inspired by but he was the, sort of the first one and even though we didn't want to live his life we were really inspired by the fact that he was able to uproot his life let go of the superfluous and the one way that he donated a lot of this stuff to his friends actually mm -hmm. he was living here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and he and his girlfriend had a breakup party which in and of itself is that was actually the inspiration for the packing party yeah yeah um yeah he wrote about that let's put a link uh to that essay podcast sean in the show notes yeah definitely the breakup uh, party it's a great essay and uh he goes in depth in his book uh called my exile lifestyle he's naked on the cover of that book um <laughs> with a computer over his private parts as soon as i feel comfortable taking a naked picture i'm totally going to recreate that book cover <laughs> i think because we're so uncomfortable taking it would be even <laughs> better for us to do it probably we should both put on 30 pounds <laughs> And oh then remake God. the cover. Yeah. Um, no, I know where you're going with this, man. The uh, the 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 uh, garage sale room. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. He had the free yard sale room. That's a dude. That's a great idea. And so so as they were getting ready to move, him and his his partner who who uh, they were splitting up. They they agreed together. Like at midnight, we're going to we're, we're going to change our Facebook status. So that's that means it's official. We're no longer in a relationship. Uh, at least that was official. I guess in 2008 or 2009, whenever that was. And um, and and. But in that process, the 30 days leading up to it, they had a free yard sale room. They, they took the, the room that one of the rooms in their house and said, hey, that's our yard sale room. We don't want anything in there. If you would find value in anything in that room, mm -hmm. then go get it. 
Don't show it to me. Just take it out of the house. If you're not going to find value in it, that's okay too. We're going to donate the rest as soon as we're done with that. And so that gives that gives your friends the option because it is better to give someone the option than it is to thrust upon them 70 of, neckties. Of course. But even then, like... It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> right, right. Uh, although, I mean, I, I guess the, the, uh, what I'm saying here is what I probably should have done is say, hey, Ryan, I have 70 neckties yeah, that you, I'm no longer going to use. Would you like any of these? Yeah, you gave me the option. I remember you were like, no, just whatever, you, keep what you want and then just donate the rest. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Like, but, I can do that. Which, which, that was the cost of taking the ties. They were nice ties. I really, I loved those ties. <laughs> Dude, I had, I can't tell you how many people in uh our old job and our old corporation we worked for they would tell me dude every time i see you it looks like you're running for president <laughs> <laughs> i'm assuming that's their way of telling me that i i dressed like almost like too nice <laughs> but but it, those ties were a big part of it man. <laughs> so i was happy to donate the rest of them i i think it's important to also keep in mind that just because you have gotten value from something doesn't mean someone else will too and that's one of the things we confuse but i think the opposite is also true uh just because you're no longer getting value from something doesn't mean it's a piece of trash right. someone else might get value from it it's not going to magically start bringing you value again right you know, the the teenage mutant ninja turtles that i played with at age seven uh, if i hold on to them now they're not going to start like all of a sudden wow yeah i should just start playing with those again <laughs> and when we when we when we illustrate it with such absurd terms then we can start to realize that a lot of the physical possessions that we have are sort of just grown up versions of, of toys and and I'm not getting value from this but maybe just maybe someone else can so letting go of those neckties sounds like you got some value from them yeah absolutely and, and uh, there's a there's a better way to approach it for sure though definitely so instead of giving them, maybe ask them if they need anything. Maybe try out the donation or the yard, the free yard sale room. And of course, maybe try to sell a few things, if, especially if you're in debt, Don. I think that will, uh, that, will, that will help you on your journey of letting go, determining what things you should sell, what things you should donate. And of course, there's a leftover pile. There's going to be trash there as well. And we need to be upfront and honest about that. If you can recycle things, great. If you can reuse things, great. But it's already trash if it's just sitting there in your house collecting dust. Indeed. Don, I'd love to send you a copy of our book, Essential. It's an essay collection with 150 essays about simple living, about intentional living. And it's sort of the best of the minimalists. And I think there are two chapters in particular that you'll find value in. There's a chapter on stuff. Actually, three chapters. There's, a, there's another chapter in there. Uh, oh, four chapters because there's a chapter on minimalism. There's a chapter on stuff. There's a chapter on relationships. And there's a chapter on contribution because that's one of the things to think about here because the stuff's collecting dust in your house. You're not really contributing beyond yourself. But if you let go of it, you can contribute beyond yourself in a meaningful way. So, Sean, if you could reach out to Don, send her the audiobook of Essential, the essay collection, or um, the book book or the ebook if she wants those.